Hi, everybody, and uh, welcome back. Uh, this session is going to be focused on going over the first practice case study for strategic management. I'm Dr. Laura Portalese, and um, thank you for having watched the, uh, the other videos that uh, were um, posted previously. And if you haven't had a chance to review those, you should go back and review those before you come back and, uh, and, and review this video. Uh, so I do want to say congratulations because at this point, by the time you're watching this video, you are pretty much complete with all of the content in the in the course. Now, now you'll just focus on the case study and the questions. So the purpose of this session will be to go over the correct answers for case study number one. And uh, I also want to give you a couple of tips and things that you may think about as you work through these uh, these case studies, both for practice and for the real one that you'll be taking probably fairly soon. A couple of things to think about uh, the way I approach uh, case study and, and test questions like this is, first, I would suggest reading through the entire case study, maybe even a couple of times to make sure you understand the situation and what is going on. And then I suggest that you go through and you read every single question and before you answer anything. So go through the whole, all of the questions, read through them, and then go back and look at the and an, first answer the questions that you're really comfortable with, that you know for sure that you have the correct answer. So that allows you to then uh, go back and look at the ones maybe that you're not quite as sure about. So again, read through the case a couple of times. And next, you'll want to go through, read all of the questions, go back, answer the ones that you're really, really comfortable with, and you're sure that you know the answer, and then go back and address the ones maybe that you aren't as sure about. So that would be my recommendation on, um, on how to approach this. So let's talk a little bit about this case. Uh, we have a, a situation where these two friends uh, have started this really successful side business. And they're pretty excited because they've um, started actually earning more money in the side business than, than they do in their regular jobs. So um, they're really thinking that they may need to look at a strategic direction for, uh, for their side business. And uh, so they, they are digging in and they're developing a mission and a vision. And then they also do that internal analysis, a SWOT analysis on their company. And then they uh, next, of course, will do a pest or pestle analysis and then move forward with developing the goals and objectives for their business. So let's dig into the questions here and um, talk about the correct answers and why uh, the answers are, are correct. So in this first question, uh, it talks about the implementation of their strategic plan and um, what short-term specific things do they need to do to implement the strategy? The key words in this question are short-term and specific. So because of that, the correct answer is tactics. Um, as you know, mission is an overarching, uh, overarching long-term. Goals tend to be more overarching and also long-term. Objectives are a bit shorter term. But um, the specific things, these are the day-to-day -day things, the week-to-week -week things that someone would do in order to, uh, to meet the, um, the goals and objectives of their strategic plan. So for this one, our correct answer is D, tactics. So let's look at our second question. Uh, we know that they have not yet performed a pestle analysis. And in doing that, they're going to look at uh, economic and social aspects that will help guide their strategic direction. So this question is asking what element of the strategic planning process would this type of analysis be considered? The correct answer here is B, external analysis. And the reason for that is um, an internal analysis, of course, would be a SWOT analysis, not PESTEL. And PESTEL always looks at the external things within an organization. So, um, you know, things like that are listed here, economic, social, political, that type of thing. So let's move on to question three. Question three asks about um, the fact that they stay within the price range of their competitors and their differentiation is difficult to do as compared to competitors. 
So we're looking at what type of market structure they're operating in. The correct answer here is A, the monopolistic competition. And one thing I want to point out that you may remember when we talked about this uh, some time ago in an earlier video is that a lot of times people will get monopoly confused with monopolistic competition, but they're really uh, quite different. And the characteristics of monopolistic competition are what is listed here. Differentiation is difficult to do and they stay within the price range of their competitors. So those are our two clues that A is the correct answer here. Our next question asks about the Delta model. And um, the Delta model, if you remember, is a way of looking at your competitive advantages. And um, in this case, the key words here that you'd want to look for is that um, we're talking about a large horizontal breadth and complete integration of services. So if you remember from your reading with the Delta model, when we look at complete integration of services, we're really quite focused on providing the best service to our customers. So the correct answer here would be D, the total customer solutions. A question number five looks at the sources of competitive advantage. And one that you may remember from your readings is uh, TQM or total quality management. And there are quite a few costs associated with total quality management. And uh, the key here is one thought they have is to review each other's coding before it goes to the client for testing. So when we look at total quality management costs, because you're doing the review before it's actually being sent to the client, this would be considered a prevention cost for total quality management. For our next question, uh, we talked a lot about the value chain, as I'm sure you remember, and that is one way to achieve a competitive advantage uh, over, uh, over, of course, your competition. So question number six looks at what element of uh, the case study of Microtech value chain would be considered a support activity. And a support activity here is A, the infrastructure, because um, operations, sales, and service would not be considered support activities. Um, so infrastructure would be things like uh, the organizational structure uh, and um, the way that is designed for, for their company, even though it's quite small. Question number seven uh, looks at the life cycle model. And uh, we talk here about it, them being in the growth phase of the life cycle model. And um, this is because they're a relatively new startup. As you know, we, we read that in the case. So the question is asking what kind of challenges um, or issues might they experience when they're in this growth phase? And the correct answer here is A, trying to expand their market share. Because if you remember when we talked about the, the life cycle model, we talked about how different strategies might be implemented depending on which phase of the life cycle model an organization is at. And here definitely the, the biggest thing would be market share. They're probably not trying to solve technical issues. They're probably not ready to introduce new products or services. And they're also not looking at finding investments. They're really focused in that growth phase of expanding their market share. Question number eight looks at uh, Porter's five forces. And uh, the main things to pull out of this question here to get the correct answer is uh, with the five forces, wh what is the intent of understanding the attractiveness of an industry? So when they do that, they determine there are many companies that fulfill the same need. And they're also a bit concerned by this because they know that it, this is important information for them to ultimately determine what their strategy is going to be. So in this case, in question number eight, the answer is D. They're mostly concerned then about uh, substitutes. And uh, substitutes, again, the key here is that many companies fulfill the same need. So um, the correct answer there is D. Question number nine is focused on um, gener the generic strategies that we talked about in the course and they're going to focus on differentiation focus. So when a company decides to choose this type of strategy, there are two elements um, because they decided to go this direction that, uh, that we should consider here. 
And that is the fact that the market is niche. So it's a fairly small market. And they're also going to focus on a differentiated product. So trying to make, at least in the eyes of the customer, their product appear really different than, uh, than, than their competitors. Our final question for this case study is about a growth platform. And if you recall, we talked about growth and a variety of different growth strategies that a company might uh, implement. And uh, when a company decides to choose uh, growth, they're really focusing on A. Uh, so the correct answer here is A, the diversification of the services that they offer. So in this case, uh, for, the, for this company, they may focus on hiring someone to do additional uh, additional types of services maybe that they aren't able to do. So that uh, that is all of the questions and answers for this first case study. In the next video, we'll be addressing the second case study and the questions and answers for that. Uh, my recommendation, if, uh, if, if you missed some of the questions, that's okay. Uh, you do have the, the course learning outcomes and the unit learning outcomes listed for each of the questions. I would suggest going back to any that you may have missed and going back through and reading the information from that particular unit uh, just to make sure that you have a complete review of it before you uh, do your next case study. So that is it for now. As always, if you have questions or comments, please go ahead and put them in uh, the chat box. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. And we'll see you at the, uh, at the next case study review. Thank you. Well, I, have, I have great news for you. First okay. of all, great news for me, great news for the audience. I get to come back, even though we're not doing these lives, to ask you a question. Um, okay. And, and, and the question we had, which wasn't from the chat, because, again, we're doing this live, but, we, uh, but I was wondering if you could maybe touch a little bit on how uh, each of the questions, like, uh, relates to the learning outcomes that we discussed, uh, like, earlier in the course. Because it's, it's, it's noted at the bottom, but I, I think we'll probably get some questions anyway, so we might as well just do it now, bonus part of this video, just kind of touch real quick on, like, you know, how these learning objectives uh, – that we've been telling people to keep track of throughout the course, kind of connect to back to this case study. And then I'll, I'll go, I'm going to go away again, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to go away, Mike. I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so as, as you recall, during the, the first set of videos, when we talked about the five units, we always talked about the course learning outcomes and how those ultimately map to the unit outcomes. So this takes it a step further and allows us to see uh, a particular concept that is in the question and how that maps to the particular unit. So um, what it does is it allows us to measure um, your comfort level with that particular material. So suppose that you got 10 or sorry, eight out of 10 of these correct. You probably would want to go back at the two that you didn't get correct review the what the unit learning outcome is and then go back and look at that and reread that content does that answer the question mike yes i think so i think it's i yeah i just want to make sure that uh people know like remember the learning objectives are are, are important and in this course that we just went over right now um there is a direct correlation between each one of these uh, parts of the case study and a specific learning objective that you guys uh, hopefully have uh, through the course and through the, the great videos that, that Laura's been doing for us uh, you, uh, that you've gotten down. And if you're, if you're missing something, go back and, and check those. But that's, that's just me interjecting as not a subject. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I think that's a great, uh, great point that, um, you know, everything does tie together in these courses. And everything ultimately is mapped to uh, the course learning outcomes uh, everything from each bit of content that that is in the course as well as of, of course these uh, these questions as well all right absolutely well um i guess since i'm back anyway i might as well just say thanks again everyone for joining us if you have any questions leave them in the comments in the chat of course we have lists to the previous videos that were live streamed in this course and you can find a link to the course itself um but we will be back next week for you guys, but just mere moments for ourselves. <laughs> so thank you, everyone, and good luck on the course. And again, thank you, Dr. Laura, for taking us through this. Thank you. Bye, everybody.